So like Victor said, I'm Dave Stone. I'm a systems engineer with Juniper. I'm local here to the Portland market. I've been with Juniper for about six years. So if you read the little synopsis for our presentation, you know that when we were first, first thinking about the show, we thought, well, we'll just cover data center security as well as data center infrastructure should be no big deal. We thought a little more about it. It said 20 minutes to talk. We thought maybe we better focus on one or the other. So I'm gonna focus on data center infrastructure, some of the changes we've seen with virtualization and cloud computing, some of the challenges that's created for the infrastructure. Um, if you do want to talk about the security aspects of it, we'd love to do that. We're back at the, the Juniper booth there with Structured Communications. Stop by. Um, while you're back there, we've got a little GoPro camera that we're going to raffle at the end of the day, so be sure to drop a business card and you'll get to participate in that. Um, good presentation so far this morning. This will be a little change of pace since we're not focusing on security today. Um, if anybody has questions, we're going to stay on, try to stay on topic, but there's always time for questions. So if you have uh, questions, please jump in. So with that... Um, just a couple of foundational topics before we jump into the, the data center specifics. Um, a lot of what we're going to talk about is operational simplicity and reducing operational costs in the data center. And part of that for Juniper is our one operating system. So for us, it works across our security products, um, data center as well as campus, routers and switches and having a single OS obviously simplifies a network engineer's task because there's less to learn. Um, another quick thing to touch on is Separation of control and data plane. This has gotten more interesting than it used to be. It's, it's always been a thing that we've liked to talk about, and it's not always clear right away what we mean. So just real quickly, um, the, data, the data plane is packets forwarding, right? You think of a switch, packets go in, packets go out, that's the data plane. Then you think of somebody logging into a switch and managing it, or you think of a switch talking to another switch, running OSPF, um, spanning tree, something like that, and you sort of the brains of the switch, that's the control plane, right? And, and one of the interesting problems that have existed in networking for a long time is that um, people use the general purpose CPUs of the control plane to do flexible things around packet forwarding, which is great, unless, um, unless the data plane starts forwarding lots of traffic to the control plane. So current 1RU switches can handle a terabit of traffic, right? And there's no general purpose CPU on the planet that can handle that. So the downside is you can have a, a way to, to shoot yourself in the foot if, if things ever happen unexpectedly and all that data traffic, data plane traffic goes to the control plane. So, so part of the Juniper architecture is a separation of those two. And the thing that makes it a little more interesting than it used to be is the emergence of these overlay technologies. Maybe you've heard of software defined networking, right? Um, Cloud Stack, um, NSX from VM, VM, VMware. As people scale the data center, there's a lot of talk and effort going into abstracting the control plane. So I've got 100, 1,000 switches in my data center I don't want to log into all 1,000 of them to make a change. I want one control plane that then intelligently manages all those. So we're seeing that industry-wide, right? It's a huge movement over the last couple of years. And so with our architecture, we've done that since day one, 1998. Um, it's sort of a nice fit for us. So that's a piece of the data center puzzle. And then um, just for those of you that may not be familiar with, with where Juniper plays and exactly who we are, so we're a networking and security company. Really, the, the, the three places we play are switching, which is really going to be the focus of the talk today for the data center, routing for the wide area and the internet edge, and then security, both, both data center and campus. So, onward and upward. Why do people build data centers? I like to think it's because switches are cool, but um, that's not the case. It's uh, obviously because they need applications for business purposes, right? So, CIOs care about data centers, they care about the infrastructure in as much as it enables the applications, right? They care about mission critical applications like SAP, et cetera, Salesforce, what is it? So, as network engineers, we need to do everything we can to enable those engineers, right? Enable those um, applications from an uptime perspective, from a flexibility perspective. And some of these technologies, virtualization and cloud that we've all been talking about for a few years now, um, are really application-centric, right? Um, or server-centric, virtualization, how to use my servers more effectively. Cloud, where does my application run? How do I get away from the physical infrastructure? So if I have a problem, I'm not vulnerable to it, et cetera, et cetera. And those have put some pressures on the network side of things, right? I mean, I, I think you can make the case that the server folks and the application folks have been moving a little faster in a lot of cases than the networks have. And with a traditional data center network design, we can get in a situation where um, you know, we're not in a position to enable the server people and the application people to take advantage of all the new tools that they have. And so that's what we're trying to get around. So um, what are those problems with the network and what, what, what's the basic, basic issue here that we're trying to solve? So one is, um, depending on how it's designed, it can in, impede time to value. So, with the complexity of a large data center, data center deployment, um, that becomes complex, and there's issues there that prevent us from supporting servers as they're deployed and the applications that run on those. And then a, sort of a related issue, um, inflexibility, right? If we, as network engineers, 
have to tell the server folks and the application folks, you can't do this. You know, here's your, you need to be in this row in the data center for a specific VLAN, so keep your applications there. You know, don't take advantage of server mobility the way you could, right? Um, well, maybe your application can't live anywhere it wants for those reasons, right? That's the sort of thing we're want, trying to get away from. So, why is it a problem? So, this is a typical network diagram. Um, these are the sort of pictures we've been drawing for the last 20 years, um, and they're the sort of pictures we're still drawing today. And uh, they, they cause a, a couple of issues inside the data center. So here's a, a VM, and it sits somewhere. In, in a perfect world, it sits right, sits right next to its resource, right? One hop. So traffic goes from the VM to the server or the storage device, low latency, um, predictable, et cetera. Um, with vMotion, I can move that VM, VM, that virtual machine around. So I move it over here. Now instead of one hop, I've got three hops, so three times the latency. Um, so less effective response time. If I move it a little further, it gets a little worse. Now I've got five hops as I go from this VM to its resource. And so there's two different things going on here. One is things change as I move, and application people don't like that, right? They want it to be virtual, right? They, want, they don't want to care about the physical locality in the data center. They want to do vMotion all, all over the place to get the right server for resources or whatever it is, right? And they want it to, be, to not affect users. But with this kind of an architecture, what you can see is I'm going to have different application behavior here than I had here, right? So it changes as they move around the environment. Users call, why does it work differently yesterday than it, or today than it did yesterday? So that's bad. Plus just the overall latency, right? Um, latency is the enemy of applications. So that's bad as well. Another related aspect is when I apply services, and we've got a picture of a firewall here. Um, this could be a load balancer. This could be a, a network device running network address, network address translation services. Any kind of service that you might want to provide for the applications you deploy it somewhere in the data center, either physically or as a service on an appliance, and it creates what we call a shadow, basically meaning that you know, this VMware can be protected by this firewall. If I move the virtual machine over here, great, it's still protected. If I move the virtual machine over here, you know, it's outside of the firewall shadow, it doesn't get its security policy anymore, it's no longer protected, right? And the last thing in the world you want is the server guy to have to call up the firewall admin on the phone and say, hey, I moved my server, could you please log into the firewall and move your security policy to a different physical port? Right? In today's world, that's not, not where we want to be. Another aspect of the tree model. So in this little picture, we've got seven devices, and in large data centers, the number of devices can grow to the point where it creates management, management issues. Um, and then beyond that, we've got the interactions between devices. So if you're the network administrator and you've got seven devices, a little formula we use for end-to-end -end connectivity. If every device is going to connect to every other device, this is the formula. The key part is it's an n-squared function, right? So if I have 100 devices in my network, that number goes up to about 5,000, right? 1,000 devices, it goes up even further. So adds complexity, um, affects uptime, right? If I can't easily understand what's going on in my network, I'm likely to make mistakes. So that's a problem as well as, as the data center scale. So there's the problem statement, right? So what's the solution statement? So We'll go from the tree topology, adjust a little bit. And this is what we really want to have inside the data center, right, regardless of scale. So in this picture, we've got a VM. And wherever he sits, he's one hop away from his storage resources, one hop away from his services, like security, one hop away from his edge router. And regardless of what the server team does, wherever that guy moves, that doesn't change. The latency stays the same. The topology stays the same. So, you know, security policies can track the server wherever he goes. Life is good. Now the server folks and the application folks don't need to care as much about where in the data center they live. So then the next question becomes, okay, great, looks good, the slide's pretty, how do we do that, right? Um, so, in the simplest case, you know, this could be a single switch, right? That accomplishes everything we just talked about from a fabric topology. The problem with a single switch is, even though it solves our problems, it has issues, right? It doesn't scale. No switch ever made or that ever will be made probably can scale to the, large, the, the size we need for the large data centers. And it's also a single point of failure, right? Nobody can afford that. So in a perfect world, that fabric would be, have the qualities of a single switch, but give us the redundancy and the scalability of the typical data center network, right? So any to any connectivity, single hop, consistent low latency, and yet all the redundancy that we've always looked, so, looked for. So, that's what Juniper's talking about when we talk about fabrics. And fabrics is one of those cool data center words. It's become a buzzword, right? So you can't talk to anyone that makes networking equipment and they, you know, not talk about fabrics in the data center. Right? Everybody has a fabric architecture. And like any buzzword, as soon as it becomes a buzzword, it loses all of its meaning, right? Um, 
So what a lot of people think about when they talk about fabrics is really just saying, you know, I don't have one VLAN that sits in one place. You know, I'm, I'm going to be able to span VLANs wherever I want so that, that I, you know, my, my application infrastructure is, is not restricted by that. But what we're doing at Juniper is taking it a step further and saying, you know, we also want to save the complexity, solve the complexity issue. We want to have, solve the N squared. You know, how do I go from 5,000 potential interactions between a 100 device network and go to one device, one logical device where I manage a single device, you know, operational cost gets lowered, and how do I make sure that latency is consistent for all my applications? So, you know, three sort of foundational concepts behind our, our, our metafabric architecture. Keep it simple, few devices to manage, make it open so that I can always insert a best of breed solution, don't lock customers into a single vendor solution, and then smart, you know, make it, make it um, easy to use and provide the management tools so that changes, integration with upstream um, automation systems is easy. I'm not going to talk about this slide too long, but I just kind of want to, because the focus of today is switching, I just kind of want to call these out. Some of the other things, you know, when you think about data center design, what other things do you need to take into account? Things like routing for the internet or WAN edge, management, we'll just touch on that real quick, quick, quick quickly. Um, overlay technologies like software-defined networking, NSX from VMware, M VMware, that kind of thing. Security, we've talked about a lot of that today. Not so much in the earlier presentations focused on data center. There's some unique challenges there as well around scale and the sort of things we're trying to do. So that's an interesting topic. And then the, the overlay, you know, the overall management and implementation, that's where you know, partners like uh, structured communications come in to, to give you the end-to-end -end solution. So those are all things we take into account. Now, I'm an, I'm an engineer, so I love to talk about boxes. Um, we're not going to talk about boxes today, except to say, here's a cool new box, right? QFX 5100 is our newest data center product. Um, the only thing I'm going to say about it is only two things I'm going to say about it just because it's really cool and I can't not mention it. Um, one RU box, you know, top of rack, supports in-service software upgrade, pretty unique. You know, dual images running in virtual machines so that we can you know, uh, move back and forth, have hitless upgrade, very cool. Um, more relevant for today's conversation, fabric architectures. And this is really a key piece of where we're moving. So we've gone from a place um, where you know, we kind of have to choose the right hardware for the right architecture to now where, you know, with the QFX 5100 and some of its sister products, we can take the same box and put it into any data center architecture that we want. I'll, I'll cover the details of that, so it's kind of cool. So different architectures, what do I mean by that? So scalability. So when the Earth was young and, and Juniper first got into the switching business, we came out with this virtual chassis architecture, which is basically saying 10 switches, up to 10 switches can be managed as a single device. Kind of like stacking, but with some, some cool add-on stuff that, that made it pretty unique. Um, a couple years later, we said, well, that's good. It doesn't really solve the, the challenges in the data center because 10 devices doesn't scale nearly as far as we need to. So we came out with the QFabric, um, added some management capabilities, really a 10 gig centric architecture, um, scales up to 6,000 10 gig ports, as a, manages a single device, so very scalable. Um, still supporting traditional, you know, non-single device technologies, you know, just can, can fit as a standalone switch as well. And then our newest addition to this um, family of architectures is what we call the virtual chassis fabric. Really saying we had the sort of the campus-centric one gig um, architecture here. We had Q fabric here. We had separate hardware for the two. Let's unify that. And then let's add a, another architecture as well for, for what me at least here in Portland, what I see is, is this is kind of the sweet spot where I'm not one gig, I'm not 10 gig, I'm somewhere in the middle. And so, so really what we said with, with a virtual chassis fabric is let's take the best of both worlds. Let's take some of the things we learned from here about consistent late latency and um, some of the things we've learned from the virtual chassis world about ease of management and make those into one. And let's make sure that I can start here if I want to and move to here and then move to here without ever changing out of my, any of my devices, right? The same hardware can move from one to the other to the other. You know, one of the most difficult things for any of us to do, at least in the, in the conversations I have with customers, is predicting the future, right? I mean, you know where you are today, you know what your current requirements are, but it's really hard, especially in today's world with change being so rapid, to know where am I going to be five years from now, right? So, you know, is there going to be another technology like virtualization that's going to turn the data center on its, on its edge again? So this flexibility of and not having to um, accurately predict, predict the future is pretty beneficial. So I just want to talk about that one gig to 10 gig transition because it's you know, what I see a lot of customers dealing with 
a little bit. So here's um, you know, typical one gig infrastructure. I've got my top rack switches. What you may not be able to see is that we've got this little blue shading across the top indicating this is a single virtual chassis. So I'm managing this as a single device. Now I'm, I'm expanding. I've got more servers. I've got some blade chassis. I want to add some 10 gig to my environment. So what I do, I just slide in a new switch. It's part of the same virtual chassis. So the key things here are you know, these cables, they don't change. My, my, my core or aggregation layers, they don't need to know that anything's happened, right? They stay the same. No configuration changes. I just slide my new guy in, move resources over to it. And then as uh, my one gig gradually moves away, I just pull those resources out of my network, redeploy those to maybe the campus or whatever makes sense, right? So the key here is ease of operations and the other nice thing that, that also may not be obvious is because this is a single device, if I have traffic going from here to here, I never have to go up to my core. So that's cool for a couple of reasons. One is it takes traffic off these links, so this device can be smaller, which means it can be cheaper, less expensive. And, and the other aspect of this is lower latency, right? So it becomes, instead of a three-hop connection, one, two, three, it becomes a single-hop connection, so lower latency. So then the, the, the management piece um, is part of that as well. So for us, our management platform is called GenoSpace. And then the, the data center app that runs on top of that, we call Network Director. So that does all the things that you would expect it to do in terms of automation, right? So one pane of glass to do lifecycle management, provisioning, fault tolerance, all that. But what's been interesting for me is in the last, you know, really the last year, we've seen these virtualization comes, come along. I mentioned NSX from VMware, OpenStack, CloudStack, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of people saying, you know, we've already automated things like server provisioning, right? The server teams have done that. We haven't historically been able to do that in the network world, but we sure would like to, right? We sure would like to have, you know, be able to push one button and say, at the same time I'm provisioning a new server, wouldn't it be nice if I was also reaching out to my, my, my switching infrastructure and provisioning a VLAN and applying the right key OS, et cetera, et cetera, however I want to set up my network, so it's not two different groups doing two different things, right? One group, the server group, being very quick and automated. The network group, historically, being a little less automated and taking a little more time. Right? If I can do all that at the same time, it's a win-win. Operational cost goes down, flexibility goes up, user satisfaction goes up, my CIO is happy, all that. So you know, these are sort of some of the orchestration tools that people are using to do that. And so with our, our network management system, we can integrate with those so we can kind of get to that place that we're looking for. So that's at a real high level, you know, some of the problems that we see in the data center and, and some of the things that we're trying to do to solve it. So, um, I'll pause here for any questions, but, uh, but that's you know, what I want to talk about today. So any questions about that? Okay, great. So we'll be back there. Feel free to stop by. Appreciate your time. <laughs>